Okay, class, let's move on now to the strengths of quantitative research. Okay, pag-aralan natin, still part ng nature of inquiry and research, ng quantitative research, okay? But before that, of course, uh, as usual, we review natin yung previous lesson. So, from the book, you can click below to run the video. But basically, summarize na lang natin yung characteristics ng quantitative research. In quantitative, the questions asked are specific. Sa qualitative, mas broad. Okay? Sa quantitative, collects numerical data. Panay numbers, information, height, weight, number of minutes, etc. Sa qualitative, collects worded, text, and picture data. Okay? Yung mga, mga sinasabing uh, opinion, nandiyan yan. Okay? observations, qualitative information yan. Sa quantitative, use statistical tools to analyze and present data. Sa qualitative, use descriptions or themes. And sa quantitative, the inquiry is conducted objectively and biased. Walang kinikilingan, walang pinoprotektahan, servisyong totoo lamang, sabi nga. At sa qualitative naman, the inquiry is conducted subjectively. Now, let's move on to the strengths of quantitative research. Okay, I made some listings. The first one, it allows a researcher to objectively detail all evidences used. So, meron kang chance para objectively madetalye mo yung mga ebidensyang nakita mo. Okay, all informations are your evidence mga data na nakuha mo. Okay? Number two, testing and validating theories about how and why phenomena occur is well established. Okay? Yan ang maganda sa quantitative. Eh. Yung pag-testing mo at pag-validate mo ng mga theories, okay? Well established ang pag-present mo ng how and why the phenomena occur. The third one, it allows a researcher to use a case study to illustrate a phenomena. It allows a researcher to use a case study. Okay? Meron kang case study. Meron kang experiment. Okay? For one. Meron kang descriptive analysis. Okay? Para ma-illustrate mo yung phenomenon or yung isang study na gusto mong pag-aralan. Okay? The fourth one, the study can be replicated in different areas over time with the production of comparable findings. Ibig sabihin, minsan mo lang ginawa and you can generally, statistically, uh, conclude that it can happen also to other areas with similar characteristics as your sample. Got the idea? So, pwedeng kumuha ka sa isang school and then with similar uh, uh, information and characteristics ng school na to, maaaring kasabi mo, maaaring totoo ito sa lahat ng school sa Angela City. Get the idea? Okay, the fifth one, it can generalize research findings when the data collected are based on random samples of sufficient size. Ito yung condition, ano? Uh, random samples of sufficient size. Okay. We will learn more about the sufficient size or the sample sizes later on. But you can generalize the Mukha nung sinabi ko nga sa number 4. Uh, maaaring hindi lang ito nangyayari sa Angela City National High School. Okay. Or maaaring ito yung nangyayari sa lahat ng senior high school sa Angela. Okay. You can do that generalization. Number 6. Using statistical tools, the researcher may eliminate any unfounded influence of other variables, allowing a few to credibly establish cause and effect relationships. May mga cases kasi na yung study mo, nagkakaroon ka ng mga kinatawag nilang outliers or yung mga variables na hindi naman pala importante. And then you can, using statistical tools, eliminate other variables. No, sabi mo, ah, ito, hindi ito mahalaga. Itong variable na to hindi importante. Okay? Yung dami ng tubig pala, eh, hindi importante sa paglambot ng buho. Or, yung iyong palang uh, damit ay walang relasyon sa pag, 
buo mo ng masarap na cake. O, something like that. Number seven, results are useful for obtaining data that allow quantitative predictions in the future. Ito maganda, no? Yung resulta mo daw ngayon, based on your data that you collected, allow quantitative predictions in the future. Pwede kang mag-predict. Okay? You can predict that in the future, if the same uh, conditions occur, the same results may happen. Okay? So, number eight, data collection using quick quantitative methods is relatively easy. Okay? So, in data collection, mabilis lang. Surveys lang, telephone interviews, you can do that as well. And use that in quantitative research. Nine, testing hypotheses are properly constructed before the data are collected. Bago ka man uh, kumuha ng data or mag-interview or mag-survey, ayusin mo muna yung testing hypothesis mo. Yung questions mo that you want to answer. Kasi, baka mamaya kumuha ka na ng data, nagtanong ka na, at yung mga tinanong mo, hindi pala related dun sa iyong statement of the problem. Ay, uulitin mo ang iyong research. Number 10, provides precise quantitative or numerical data analysis. Dahil nga quantitative, puro tayo numero, kaya yung numero, pag kinumpit mo, precise siya, quantitative siya in nature, and numerical, of course. Number 11, in data analysis, researcher can utilize modern and less time-consuming statistical applications like SPSS. We will discuss that later in our future discussions. Number 12, the research results are relatively independent of the researcher and therefore unbiased. Okay, nag-example ka, nag-test ka, nag-experimento ka ng isang klaseng uh, mixture ng oil. Okay, kahit gusto mong lumambot, kung hindi naman lalambot yung buhok or hindi naman kikintab, ay talagang hindi siya kikintab because independent ang researcher sa result. These results, number 13, to higher credibility with influential people. Anong nangyayari? Walang chance na makialam ang politiko, administrator, or people who funded the research. Hindi pwedeng sabihin, Uy, palabasin mo ha, magaling itong eskwelahan natin. O ba hindi? Talagang lilitaw na lilitaw na talagang magaling ang ACNHS kumpara sa iba. Yun ang mangyayari. Or, in other schools, maaari meron silang equipment at gamit, mas lamang naman sila sa ganitong klaseng uh, experiment. Okay? So, walang epekto ang mga politiko because you're doing a quantitative research which is unbiased. Number 14, it is useful for studying a large population using smaller samples. Naintindihan na natin yan. Konti lang yung samples mo pero napag-aaralan mo ang larger population. Okay, that's all about it. And for our next topic, we will discuss the weaknesses of quantitative research. Okay, bye for now.